morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, February the 23rd. I want to introduce you to Dr. Rachel Luttrell. Rachel Luttrell, good Hi. to have you here, doctor. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, cardiology because February is heart month. That's right. But also cardiology oncology. Right. And what's it called? Is that? Yeah, cardio oncology or cardio -oncology. cardiology. Yeah. Okay. So what is cardio oncology? <laughs> yeah. So really, it's a special interest um, within cardiology primarily, but it's a combination of um, focusing on the cardiovascular care for patients with cancer, um, because we're learning more and more that there are unique um, heart health needs um, for patients as they're getting diagnosed with cancer and going through their treatments, and even living to survive longer and longer. There are different types of problems with your heart when you're diagnosed with cancer? Yeah, that's right. So there's really... As a, an example. Right, sure. So there's a broad spectrum of things. Um, for example, um, you know, cancer becomes more common as we get older, as does heart disease. And so we may have patients who recently had a heart attack and then find out um, that they have cancer and need to undergo surgeries, but now they've got stents in their heart. Um, and so we have to do some special things to manage um, issues like that. Uh, and then also there... If you um, have stents in your heart... Mm -hmm. Special procedures have to be carried so, out to have surgery? Sometimes, sometimes. It depends. Um, we may have to make special decisions about surgeries and the timing of surgeries and the medications that people can take. Um, so it's really a focus on those types of issues um, as one example. Mm -hmm. yeah, the thing is, as we grow older, <laughs> there's more and more chances of something going wrong. Yeah, that's um, right. But do you see as a whole that we are making advances leaps and bounds into curing disease and, and living longer. Yeah, absolutely. And really, that's one of the reasons that um, oncocardiology or cardio-oncology came about in the first place, because more and more people are surviving their cancer therapies and living longer. And so they're going on to experience some of um, the heart disease and other um, cardiovascular effects of their therapies. That they wouldn't have if they would have died with the cancer. Right, exactly. So you get over, you get over one, <laughs> right. and because you're living longer, there is a chance that you may yeah. uh, have a problem with something else. Right. But then some people go through all their life and have nothing wrong uh, yeah, and true. will live to a ripe old <laughs> age and not see a doctor at all. Those are the lucky ones, I guess. Yeah. So what, why is it that some people are fortunate that way and others are at the doctor all the time? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Some combination of uh, lifestyle and genetics and maybe a little luck thrown in there. Mm -hmm. If people want more information about cardio-oncology, mm -hmm. what can they do? Yeah, so probably the easiest thing is to um, visit our website on MU Healthcare, um, or um, the American Heart Association also has some information available online. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say those are some pretty and, good and resources. February being Heart Month, mm -hmm. this is a good time to realize that we need to eat right, right. exercise mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Yes and take care of our hearts because it's the only one that we have. That's right, that's right. And well, we can prevent up to 80% of first heart attacks just by following lifestyle issues like that. Um, getting enough exercise, eating right, um, not smoking. Um, but unfortunately, uh, as a country, we don't do so great at that. And in Missouri, that's true as well. Missouri, is Missouri one of the worst states for that? Well, yeah, we do have a higher risk of heart disease and death from heart disease um, as compared to the rest of the country. Okay. All right. Doctor, thank you so yeah. much for coming. Uh, thank Dr. you so Luttrell. much for having me. It's a pleasure having you here. Yes. Thank you. I like your smile, too. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> right. Now we turn to a, uh, an old friend of mine. She's not old, but you've been a friend for a long time. Jill Womack. Good to have you I'm here, so glad Jill to see Womack. You again. How from you been? Trips, and you brought along who? One of my royal friends. Yeah. This is Elsa. Elsa. Yes. yes. Good Best to have you here, Elsa. Thank you. All Very right. excited. And Elsa is here because you are doing a ball with Belle and the Beast, right? Elsa's <laughs> good friends with Belle and, and the Beast. He's, he's much nicer now. Oh, yes. But uh, it's a fundraiser for Trips Institute. It helps us raise money for scholarships for children to be in our classes and our well, camps. To, to explain what Trips Institute is. It's so much fun is what it is. It's theater reaching young people in schools. We're 17 years in the community now. We're a children's theater company that is now the lab school for the performing arts program students at Stevens College. So the Stevens women are learning how to direct for children, choreograph for children, design for children's theater. And it's just the most wonderful marriage of two entities yeah. ever. And yeah. we, we've had a long association with trips back on the Pepper and Friends oh, so show long. with Jill Womack. Yeah, you've had more kids come to oh visit. Oh, my goodness, you? Uncle James and the kids' corner. I know, <laughs> I know. 
but Belle, uh, you, you are Belle, right? No, this I'm is Elsa. Oh, you're friend. Elsa. You're yes, Elsa. Okay. I'm friends with Belle. Tell, tell, me, tell me about the production. About the tea party? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be um, on April 23rd at Stevens College from 1 to 3 at the ball, Kimball Ballroom. A lovely setting. Oh, yes. yes. And, so, and what will be going on with the tea party? All of my princess friends are going to be there. Cinderella and Snow White and Rapunzel and Sleeping Beauty. And we're going to have royal treats. And we're going to teach them how to wave like princesses. We do. Mm -hmm. It's very lovely. <laughs> Paul, you a... don't know how to do the washing the windows. I would guarantee no. Or the changing the light bulb as well. That's okay. right. She can teach My you. favorite princess waves. Yeah. So washing the window goes like this. That's the, is that a That's wave? That's the princess window. wave. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then changing the light bulb. It's very regal. Oh, yes. okay. See, so when all have specialities, the light, you when see. You see the, when you see people on floats mm -hmm. and, and the young right. ladies are waving, <laughs> sometimes they're washing the window, which is a wave. Or they back could be doing the light bulb with pearls. Oh, yeah. You just don't know it. They can change it up. Mm -hmm. So those are special, yeah. very mm -hmm. dignified ways mm -hmm. that you can only learn by coming to that tea party. To the party. tea party, mm -hmm. exactly. And how many different princes will be there? Oh my a goodness! A lot. We probably will have thirty of our royal friends there, and um, we're gonna—it's um, daddy, daughter, and mommy and me—and so the different generations can come together. And we have to teach the daddies, especially, that when you take your teacup, you don't just grab it; you have to take it gently with your pinky extended. Uh -huh. And the napkins don't go here; they go in your lap. Okay, napkins so it's don't get tucked in, in your, your neck. chin. No, they go no. on your lap. And so we'll do a little waltzing with our friends from Beauty and the Beast, and we'll get children taking pictures of Beauty and the Beast and of course with Elsa and Anna, oh, yes. two of their favorites. And uh, the characters all come to the table so you don't wait in line. And we collaborate with the Columbia um, Public Schools with their culinary arts program. They do the food for us and they're, mm. it's just amazing. So how do people get tickets for this? You go on the TRIPS website. It's www.tripskids.com and you can buy tickets right online. Okay, and how much does tickets cost? It's a fundraiser, so thank you all for being generous with us. It's $20 a person to come. Okay, well, but it's a two it's hour, a it's a two hour event mm -hmm. and we'll just spoil those children silly. It's wonderful. And how much money are you hoping that you will raise in this fundraiser? We're hoping that we will raise $6,000. Mm. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You got it. All right, know, Joe right? Womack, thank you so much. And I have so great much. help, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pleasure having both of you here. Again, that website address is... www.tripskids.com. Okay. It's always a pleasure oh having you Oh, my goodness. It's lovely and, to see And you. don't stay away so long. I won't. Elsa, I won't. thank you for coming by thank today. Thank you. Beautiful smile also. Yeah, thank you. Okay. The best. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to talk about phobias with Dr. David Newman. Drop me an email, something you'd like to see or hear, pepperpmissouri.edu. Bye-bye.